Today I want to talk about the caged system. It's really cool, it's not too complicated, and it kind of helps the guitar make sense. Hopefully after this lesson you'll have a good sense of what it is, and I'll give you a few ways to practice using it. Also, I have a free PDF that goes along with this video, so check the description for a link to that, as well as links to whatever other stuff I use in this video. Anyways, let's get into it. Right off the bat, what I want to say is caged is not something that's like invented. It's a, it's a description of the layout of the guitar. Think of it like a, like a map. A map is just information. It doesn't have instructions. It doesn't tell you what to do. But you can use a map to kind of make your own decisions about how you're going to get around a city or how you're going to map out your own road trip across the country or something like that. The cage system is the same way. There's just It's just a, a way that all the information is organized. So before we start on the actual caged system, I want to just talk about the chord shapes. So C, A, G, E, and D. Or if you want, you can throw your thumb down here. If you're a guitar player, when you think of a C chord, you think of a shape, right? When you think of a G chord, you think of this shape. But actually, this is really specific to guitar. A G chord is made up of three notes. You only need three notes, I should say. You need a G, a B, and a D. On the piano, it might look something like this. A C chord on the piano might look something like this. Or here's a D chord. What I want to stress right now is that if you're a guitar player and you think of guitar chords as shapes, that's fine, that's really helpful, that's part of the caged system, but you gotta know that a chord is really only three notes. So let's map out a C chord on the guitar. In the first three frets here, I'm gonna map out every C, E, and G that I can find. And if you look, there's E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G. They're all there. Um, and that means that all I really need to play a C chord is C, E, G. Or I could play E, G, C, or G, C, E. You could also play a C chord like this. Um, you can also grab individual notes, and as long as you have a C, an E, and a G, that's also a C chord. Um, so a C chord is made of Cs, Es, and Gs. The point I'm trying to make here is on guitar we think of these chords as shapes, and we don't often think about the individual notes that make up these chords, but this is an important concept to understand if you want to understand the caged system. So we're just going to go through these shapes um, and kind of plot out the notes in the chords. So we talked about C. A is made up of A, C sharp, and E, and you can see that might be the easiest way to play the A right there. And then we've got a G, which is, you can either play it like this, or you can play it like this. And that's because G is made up of G's, B's, and D's. And you can see the B string is obviously part of the chord, because it's a B. But at the third fret here, there's also a D, which is why people play it this way or this way. So we got C, A, G, E. E chord is made of E's, G sharps, and B's. So here's E. B, E, G sharp, B, E. That's why this is an E chord. That also means you can just play a couple notes, still an E chord, kind of cool. And then we've got a D chord here, which is made of Ds, F sharps, and As. And you notice, this is part of the reason why people say you can't play this E string, is because it's an E, not part of a D chord. Because remember, only Ds, F sharps, and As. But this is why people sometimes put their thumb over and fret this F sharp that's hanging out right here. So here's where it gets really cool. If you map out all the C's, E's, and G's on the whole fingerboard, you get this cool pattern. You see, okay, here's kind of a C shape here. Now, if I grab a capo, if I capo on the third fret here, um, and I want to play a C chord, 
to play a C chord, I would actually have to play an A shape. So I'm playing an A, A chord according to, you know, guitar shapes, but all the notes in the chord are C's, E's, and G's, which actually makes this a C chord. If I capo on the fifth fret here, all the C's, E's, and G's kind of happen to fit into a G shape. That's pretty cool. Let's see, if I capo on the eighth fret here, and you want to play a C chord, all the C's, E's, and G's happen to fit into an E shape. Pretty cool. And then the final shape is capo here at the tenth fret, and to play a C chord, you have to play a D shape. In a nutshell, what you just saw is when we play a C chord open here, first position, whatever you want to call it, um, you've got this kind of progression of shapes that goes up the neck. C shape, A shape, G shape. Notice I'm not even bothering to try to bar that because it's, it's just giving you the information. It doesn't mean you have to play a G shaped bar chord. Um, people rarely do that unless they have massive hands. Here's your E shaped C chord up here. And then here's kind of a D shape. And then we're back to the C shape up here. So essentially the cage system just is a way to describe how the shapes line up on the neck. To clarify here, um, once you get to that D shape, it just starts back over at the C shape. So if we start with, uh, let's say, a G chord here. Remember, G is G, B, and D. Um, well, we got a G shape. The next chord shape is an E shape. And if you look here, oh, all the Gs, Bs, and Ds are all in an E shape. If we find all the G's, B's, and D's here, we end up with a D shape. If we find all the G, B's, D here, see what I'm saying? So we've got G shape, E shape, D shape, C shape, and then A shape. And then we're back to the G shape. This is just the order of shapes. Do you see what I mean now? How this is not really something to do as much as something to observe. Just to make it nice and clear, we'll take another chord shape. So let's take an F chord here. We got, here's an F chord. So this is the E shape. That means the next shape is gonna be a D shape. And I'm gonna play just part of it here, but you can see the rest of it is hanging out back here. Um, the next shape is a C shape, because we've got C, A, G, E, D, C, A, G, E, D, just kind of loops around. So here's this C shape. Not really a fun chord to play, but uh, it's there. And then the next shape is an A shape. And then the next shape again is this G shape. And then we're back to this E shape here, which this weird camera guitar is not very easy to hold, so I'm just going to let you kind of let you kind of see it there. But what am I trying to say here? You could take any chord. Here's an A chord, so we got A shape, G shape, E shape, D shape, C shape, and then back to E shape, or back to A shape, excuse me. <laughs> um, so this information is cool. What do you do with it? So now I want to talk about the pentatonic scales that go with each of these shapes. So remember back here when we, remember way back, <laughs> like two minutes ago, when we plotted out all the C's, E's, and G's on the whole fingerboard, and we went, oh, that makes a C shape, an A shape, a G shape, an E shape, and a D shape. How cool. A pentatonic scale is made of five notes. Uh, chords are made of three notes. Pentatonic scale made of five notes. A pentatonic scale in the key of C is... C, D, E, G, A. And then we're back to C. So if we plot out all the available um, notes in that pentatonic scale here, we get this nice shape. Well, let's plot them out on the whole fingerboard here. So uh, we've got this C-shaped chord, and then we've got this C 
C-shaped pentatonic scale that goes with it. They kind of like overlap each other. They all hang out in the same area. Let's move up to the A-shape here. We've got an A-shaped chord, which I'm not playing the whole chord. I'm just playing, let's see, I'm playing a C, a G, a C, and an E. That's all you need. I'm not worrying about this note down here. Um, so the pentatonic scale that fits in this position is... Kind of nice. Now the next shape is this G shape, and if we turn that into a pentatonic scale, look familiar? This is the classic first pentatonic scale that most people learn. So then our next chord shape is E, and there's an E shape pentatonic scale that goes with it. And then our next shape here, D, and there is. There's this nice D-shaped pentatonic scale. And then we're back to this C-shaped pentatonic scale. See that C-shape hiding there? And then here's the scale that goes with it. So, another way to think about this is these shapes, C-A-G-E-D, C-A-G-E-D, it's, it's like a circle. Um, once we get to the 12th fret here, the notes are an octave higher, but they start over. In the same sense, this shape um, we've got the C shape here, we've got the C shape here. If we move everything up two frets, now we're in the key of D. All those shapes just shift up with it. And then if we move up to, let's say, let's say the key of F. All these shapes just keep moving up. And now, uh, if we move up to the key of G here. All these shapes down here start popping up that are available now. So let's, let's scoot it up one more. Let's scoot up to the key of A major. So everything just shifts up. And we've got now this, this G shape is here because we got our root note here. E shape is here. So when you keep scooting it up, you keep having more shapes available down here. And if you scoot it down, you keep having more shapes available up here. The whole system is always in that same order, C, A, G, E, D. And if you shift one scale to a new key, you end up shifting all of them to the new key. Uh, if you want to think about how this connects in kind of a rhythm and chord kind of way, I have a video called Chords on the Top Three Strings that touches on some of this stuff. Um, D shape, E shape, and A shaped chords all just up on the top three strings here. And there's some kind of fun stuff you can think about that connects to this video. I want to give you some ways to practice this now. Um, we've talked about what the caged system is, we've talked about how the chords line up, and we've talked about how the pentatonic scales line up. Now, let's pick some kind of fun ways to use this. So, if you're comfortable with this uh, G-shaped pentatonic scale, something you can do is you can map out, okay, what is the next shape up? And if we're in the G shape, the next shape is the E shape. So here's G shape. Here's the E shape. So let's just look at those two shapes for a second. And what I want you to think about is you can practice sliding from one shape into the next shape. Kind of methodically. Okay, I can slide up to that shape on the E string. Now I'm gonna practice. sliding up to that scale on the B string. Now, practice the G string. And you can think about sliding up from the finger that's in front, or 
the note that's in the back here. Uh, front, back. And then once you feel like you're comfortable with those two shapes, um, you have basically taught your brain how to deal with the next shape, and the next shape will come much easier, and the concepts will make sense. If you try doing it with everything all at once, sometimes it just becomes a traffic jam, and it can be really frustrating. So start slow, keep it simple, be very mindful about the way you're practicing this stuff, and it'll come along. You can also pick the scale behind, which in this case is the A shape, because C, A, G, E, D. This is the G shape, this is the E shape, here's the A shape. So you can also map out ways that you want to slide up through both scales like this. Kind of fun. Um, you can also slide back through them. And the idea here, and I can't stress this enough, is you want to remove the guesswork. For now, if it's if it feels overwhelming to figure all of them out, start with just the top two strings and think, okay, if I'm in this scale, I know I can slide from here to here. Okay. Uh, if I'm in this scale, I know that I can slide from here to here, or, so if it's overwhelming, take it slow, take it easy, focus on two strings at a time. Once you get really comfortable sliding between shapes on those two strings, add one more string. It's going to be a little more satisfying, I think, to work on the high strings first, but do whatever feels good to you. Uh, so you might practice going... That's cool. So again, I'm sliding from the back of this shape. Here's the back, here's the front. I'm sliding from the back of this shape to the back of this shape. The back of the G shape to the back of the A shape. So if you want to keep inching your way forward, here's the E shape, here's the D shape. So you could think, okay, now that I'm comfortable in the G shaped, pentatonic scale. Maybe I want to hang out just on the E shape and the D shape. You can do the same thing. So again, I'm just picking where I want to slide to. So I know that if I'm playing the E shape pentatonic scale, I know I can slide up to here and now I'm in the D shape. Once you start getting a feel for it, it's awesome. And the cool thing is, you can shift all of this to a new key. If you can memorize what note is the root note of every scale, so here, if we're in the key of A, that's an A. That's the root note for this scale, back here, the G shape. It's also the root note for the E shape. The D shape, is tricky, it's rooted on the D string, but you can just remember, okay, root note for G shape, root note for E shape, two strings down, two frets up, that's an octave. That's the root note for the D shape. And then we've got, on the A string here, this is obviously an A, it's at the 12th fret of the A string, that's the root note for the C shape. And it's also the root note for the A shape. So I'm going to put a jam track on and kind of just play around with some of this stuff and think about either sliding through the shapes or just moving somewhere else altogether. I'm going to map out the shapes so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. Yeah, so starting out in the G shape here. Sliding up to the E shape. Grabbed one note from the D shape. That's the other cool thing, it's just sliding up and then coming back down, so. That one note. 
I know that it's part of this D shape. So there I went, I went from the D shape up to the C shape. Now I'm in the A shape. Now I'm back to the G shape. Grabbed a note from the E shape there. So if I want to jump somewhere else, I know there's a root note here. There's C shape again. I know here's the E shape. There's an A. Okay, so hopefully that's some good stuff to think about. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment or if you have questions. Um, you know, I want to keep making more videos like this, so your feedback helps me figure out what video to do next. Um, please check out the PDF that goes with this. Uh, the PDF is going to talk about the relative minor versions of these shapes, which they're all the same shapes. There's just a different reference note and... That'll make more sense. Uh, if you're familiar with the G shape pentatonic scale, you know how it's in a major key and a minor key at the same time. Well, all the scales have a major root note and a minor root note, and um, the PDF will make a ton of sense, hopefully. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm looking forward to making more videos. Have fun, and yeah, take it easy.